this is the story of a horse. Not a cow pony like we used at the ranch, but a very unusual horse. He showed up one night during the roundup, when we'd made camp and finished supper after a hard day's branding. Everything was peaceful and quiet, and would have remained that way if we'd known he was around. But he'd crept up to the edge of a hill as quietly as some giant cat. He had his eye on Lady, a beautiful pinto mare that belonged to Chick Palmer, our foreman. Chick had won several rodeo contests with Lady, and she meant more to him than anything else in the world. There's no sense looking for him tonight. I'll get him if it takes a month. Not till we finish branding, Chick. You let that mangy stunt get away with my mare right from under your nose. You must have been sound asleep. No, I wasn't. I was watching. He didn't make no noise. He just popped out of the trees all of a sudden, was gone with Lady before I could even think. I'm sure sorry, Chick. You're sorry. Well, it can't be helped now. I'll tell you one thing, Miss Joan. He was no ordinary range stallion. What do you mean? I got a good look at him. There was something different about him. I've never seen a horse just like him before. Yeah, well, that don't help Lady none. Now get back on a job, and next time keep your eyes open. Chick had always been hot-headed, but I couldn't blame him for being bitter this time. No one knew better than I did what his loss meant to him. It meant the difference between being a champion and just another cowboy. For Rodeo, horses like Lady are one in a thousand. Chick, I've been thinking about that stallion. So have I. Well, Boyd said there was something different about him. I saw a notice the other day. A show stallion got away during a train fire. 
wonder if he could be the one. I don't know. Who cares? Well, don't you think I ought to notify the owner when I get back to the house? Sure, notify him. But I'm not waiting around for him. But if he's a show horse, he's very valuable. There'll be a big reward for him. It better be big or the guy will be looking for a dead horse. Get them, please. Good night, Joan. I phoned the sheriff and located the owner of the lost horse. He arrived a few days later by plane. His name was Jeff Keene, the owner of one of the largest stables of show horses in the country. He persuaded Gramps and me to fly over the range and point out the spot where the horse had last been seen. We're coming over our summer range now. Where was it you thought Jubilee was seen? Down that little valley by the stream. We were branding down there at the time, but we moved our camp yesterday. Oh, he doesn't seem to be there now. No, of course not. He's out on the prowl. You, you wouldn't expect him to stay in one place, would you? No. Where do you think he'd go if he moved on? Well, let's see. Could be that little meadow over on Half Mile Ridge. You, you know, uh, that hasn't been grazed this season. You know, he might find that kind of peaceful. Yes, that's right. He might. Straight ahead about eight miles. Could be Jubilee, all right. You frighten him out of his whip. Not if it's Jubilee. He's ridden in plane. I told you you'd scare him. I guess I bust him a little close, but it's Jubilee, all right. He's as good as back in the barn right now. You think so? That's yes, son. Let me ask you, what would you do if you was out having yourself a few wild oats and pop a whistle and said, come on home, boy, what would you do? I'd get him back. If you could let me have a couple of men. Oh, I'm sorry. We're right in the middle of Roundup. But you can stay at our ranch while you're looking for him. Oh, thanks. That'd be very nice. You know, I was really surprised the size of the ranches out here. What have you got, about 5,000 acres? 5,000? Oh, it's a little better than 25,000. Yeah, and that don't count the summer range. That's quite a ranch. You haven't spent much time in this part of the country, have you? I've never had any occasion to. Well, you ought to make an occasion sometime. You know, the scenery around here is right pretty. I seem to have an occasion right now. Thanks to Jubilee. Say, can't you get your mind off of that horse for at least five minutes? After all, Grandpa, Jubilee's a very valuable horse. It may sound a little foolish, but Jubilee means more to me than just another horse. He's part of my life, almost as if he were a human. You see, I was with him from the very minute he was foaled. I helped to bring Jubilee into the world. I saw him take his very first steps and his first dinner. It wasn't long before he was frolicking around with the other horses, just like a kid. Why, he's never known anything but kindness. And you could tell it when he was old enough to start his training. Of course, work was a little strange to him at first, but he settled down. He became the smoothest five-gated horse I've ever ridden. He was the envy of every horse owner who saw him. He swept the prize list of every Eastern show in which he was entered. Then three months ago, I decided to bring him out west to show the Pacific Coast what a real American saddlebred looked like. Get a kiss. You keep Jubilee quiet. Sweetheart. Oh, son. Oh. 
What's the matter? Something's bothering him. Oh, I think he just wants to stretch his legs a little. Oh, I can't say I blame him for that. Have you had dinner, Sam? No, sir, I ain't. Well, why don't you grab Mike's weed? We're laying over for now at the next stop. We'll give him all a breather then. Yes, sir. I want Jubilee here in top shape for that San Francisco show. Oh, yes, sir. I'll see you later, baby. I sure will be glad when we get to California. Sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. The weather forecast for tomorrow says rain. Oh, that's okay. You don't get there till the day after. Oh. <laughs> now you be a good boy. What's the trouble? There's a fire for here. Come on, Jim, let's take a look. your head, Jeff. I am. I'm going after him. They'll cut out the car at the next stop and you can get help. Yeah, in the meantime, Jubilee will be miles away. Look after things, will you? Okay, Sam. I didn't think Jubilee would go far, but I couldn't find him. And I hated to think what might happen to him alone out there in the desert. There were dangers he wouldn't be prepared for or know how to avoid. Oh, silly things, maybe, but they'd frighten him. run farther and farther away. By morning, I'd lost all track of it. There was nothing I could do but go back to the nearest town for help.
I searched for days, but there wasn't a trace of him. Then I met two wandering Indians. They had seen Jubilee the day before, coming upon him unexpectedly at a waterfall. They described him perfectly. It was obvious he'd made quite an impression on them. Apparently, Jubilee was glad to see a human being again. He trotted right up to them, eager to make friends. Of course, to them, he was just another stray horse. They discovered he wasn't branded, which, to their way of thinking, automatically made him theirs. But right there, they made their first mistake. They tried to ride him. I saw the bridle they used. It had a big, sharp Spanish bit. One that would tear a horse's mouth to pieces. Jubilee tried to understand what was expected of him, but he couldn't understand being hurt. <laughs> He gave them an argument. From what they told me, they got pretty discouraged. They decided not to keep him. Instead, they brand him and sell him. Now, you've got to remember that Jubilee had never been mistreated. Also, he'd been scared out of his wits by the fire on the train. The minute he saw the branding fire and smelled that smoke, he decided he didn't want any part of it. He got away from there as fast as he could. Indians tried to catch him again, but it was like trying to catch a wild animal. them and he outsmarted them. And finally they gave it up as a bad job. Where he went from there I had no idea. I'd just about given up hope until I received your telegram. I'm glad we could help you. So am I. Speaking of horses, I've got to finish braiding that lariat. Why all the rust? You've been puttering around with it for six months. Well it's got to be finished sometime hasn't it? Besides it'll keep me out of mischief. More coffee? Uh -huh. Say, you've done pretty well in the Blue Ribbon class yourself. Thank you. You know, you surprised me a little in that dress. Oh, how? Well, seeing as I did this afternoon, I unconsciously cataloged you as sort of a modern Annie Oakley. <laughs> You're really very lovely. Thank you, sir. You surprised me, too. You're quite different than I imagined from the first time I saw you. You mean the airport? No. Madison Square Garden last winter. I saw you show your horses. What were you doing there? Oh, I go to New York every winter. Catch the theaters and have a little fun. But I always wind up at the horse show. Well, suppose we pretend this is winter, and you're in New York, and we're having a play. Hartley? Well, what are you up to this time of night? I had to drive in and pick up some more bacon. Uh, be 
clean out after breakfast tomorrow. Well, what happened to them two sides that Wally brought out yesterday? Oh, uh, Wally brings some out? First I heard about it. I know why you come, and I know all the answers. Did Jeff Keene get in today? Yes, he did. Is he like Joan? Well, I kind of think he does. Well, does Joan like him? <laughs> well, it don't look exactly like she's feuding with him, does it? Meet Mr. Keene. This is Chick Palmer, our foreman. Hi, Mr. Keene. Hello, Chick. The first name's Jeff. Right. Well, don't you look pretty tonight? <laughs> You'd think this is the first time you'd ever seen me dressed up. I've been trying to unsell her from those Levi's she wears. I figure a girl always looks pretty in dresses taking care of a home. <laughs> Please sit down. I'll fix some drinks. You know, that horse of yours cost me a lot of dough, don't you? I'm afraid I don't understand. Russell, my mare from the Roundup camp. Well, I saw Jubilee this afternoon. There's no mare with him. Yeah, I know. She was killed. Oh, I'm sorry my horse cost you money. I'd like to give you a check. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Uh, don't be silly. Uh, 600. That's what she cost me. How was the mare killed? I shot her. Accidentally. What do you mean, accidentally? I was aiming at that horse of yours. Well, that makes things a little different. Well, I didn't get a good look at him, and I thought he was some old range stallion out stealing mares. I figure I still got that coming. Not for me. If you could shoot straight, you'd have killed a $25,000 show horse. I'm not responsible for your bad aim, my friend. Well, here we are. Oh, thank you. Did Thanks. I hear somebody calling me? Yes, dear. Here you are. <laughs> You know, there's a funny thing. Every time we have a good roast of beef around here, it always makes me thirsty. You know, we eat a lot of roast beef around here. <laughs> well, success in recovering your horse. Thanks. When we do get him, we'll really celebrate. Suppose you don't get him, Mr. Keene. What'll it be worth to you if me and some of the boys bring him in after the roundup? $2,500, providing he's brought in uninjured and in good shape. If we get him, you won't have any worries. Them toothache drops you wanted, Chick, I put in the seat of your truck. Toothache drops? Yeah, Wally's got a toothache so liable to blow the top of his head off. You better get him down there right away or else the boys won't have any breakfast. You know, Mr. Keene, Wally's our cook. Oh, yes, Chick, poor Wally. You know how he suffers. Yeah, come on, pour that into you and get going. Yeah, maybe I'd better. So long. Good night. Don't, don't let us interfere with your dancing. Good night, Chick. Listen, you know and I know that Wally hasn't got a tooth in his head. I also know and I ain't wanted. Now, don't go busting the cinch, boy. It ain't often Joan gets a chance to meet a nice young fella like Mr. Keene. If I ever get a rope on that horse of his, it'll cost him a lot more than any 2,500 bucks. Ten fifteen. It's getting rather late. You're not sleepy, are you? No, but uh, I know around here it's early to bed and early to rise. And I don't want to keep you folks up. Oh, I don't mind. Unless you need some rest. <sighs> I'm used to staying up late. But I would like to get an early start in the morning. Perhaps if you could lend me a horse and give me a few directions, I'd appreciate it. Of course. You can ride partway to camp with Grandpa and me. I'll show you where to turn off. Fine. Well, I, I think I'll smoke a cigarette and say goodnight to your granddad. Good night, John. See you in the morning. These nights you have here are really something. Cigarette, sir? No, thanks. My weakness is women.
Well, here's where you turn off. You think you can follow this map we made for you? I think so. That wiggly line is the river you come to in that canyon. Well, you cross that, then about six miles further on, you come to the rapids. In the pasture where you saw Jubilee, just above the rapids at the top of Half Mile Ridge. Well, nice day for a ride. I wish we could go with you. Good luck. Thanks a lot. I'll see you sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow, huh? I know a fellow lost a Palomino stud once. He never did find him. But his coat showed up all over Colorado and New Mexico. I think Jeff will do all right. How come? He insisted on riding a mare. Pretty nice young fellow, that. <laughs> Kind of lonesome out here all by yourself, aren't you, son? I'll bet you've been lonesome. Come on. <laughs> oh, Jubilee! Oh, stop acting like a two-year-old. Come on, let's go home. Easy, son. Jubilee, let's not do this the hard way. <laughs> but you scared me as much as I scared you. You've given me an idea. Now see if you can keep the old boy around, will you? Sorry to steal your timber, my friend, but maybe you can help me catch that horse of mine. Stop worrying. You'll get them back. Now all you've got to do, baby, is turn on the charm. Get glamorous, will you? Can't you do anything but eat?
Well, you're a guy that takes his time, aren't you, boy? But it's all right. I've got you now. You did a good job, old girl. <laughs> Don't overdo it, though. Here, Jubilee. <gasps> Jubilee! Come on, son, stop the foolishness and let's go home. Jubilee! What's the matter with you, big dope? Have you gone crazy? Stop it! Jubilee! Jubilee! Old girl, come here! Old girl! Go ahead and laugh. Well, that's all there is. If you want any more, you'll have to go out and work for it. something. Look, way, way out yonder. <laughs> Looks like he might have been the victim of an elopement. Poor guy. I'll give him a lift. Hey, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going with you, you know. out of gas. I'm thumbing my way to a filling station. Oh, dope. Get in. Say, just where was you when Jubilee swiped that mare off on you? I don't know. Somewhere in the vicinity of a beaver dam. Then you've been walking all night and all day? No, I slid most of the night. Just what I figured. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, I can't figure out what's happened to Jubilee. I thought he'd be glad to see me. Instead, he came at me as if I were his worst enemy. No more thanks. Well, after all, Maybe you were breaking up a romance. It's more serious than that. Something's happened to him. If I don't catch him soon, he'll have to become a real problem. Well, the roundup's over tomorrow. I can let you have as many men as you'll need. Thanks. I'm afraid I'll need as many as I can get. Will Chick be in charge of the men? He's the foreman. I wouldn't want anything to happen to Jubilee. Now, listen, son. If Chick catches that horse, it means $2,500 to him. Now, Chick may be a little hard to get along with at times, but... <laughs> He's nobody's fool. Not at them prices. No, sir. Well, let's hope you're right.
thought you'd be dead to the world after your nice long walk. Couldn't sleep. Too many things in my mind, I guess. Jubilee? Among other things. Well, you picked a lovely evening for insomnia. I suppose you've got a lot of things on your mind, too. Could be. Don't tell me you're worried about Jubilee. I don't know. Maybe. He's lost, isn't he? Look, who's kidding, though? As long as Jubilee had to get himself lost, I'm glad he chose this particular place to do it. You know that, don't you? Yes, I do. And I also know that I'm glad. But I don't mind telling you. I'm a little worried. Dracula Keen, the man that goes around frightening pretty women. <laughs> you think I'm afraid of you? You're crazy. Me that's got me shaking. Give a gal a little time, will you? Sure, a little. But you better head for that barn, though, before I change my mind. Good night, Jeff. Pleasant dreams. Are you kidding? Insomnia? Now I know why you had to walk home from the Beaver Dam. You do? Yeah, listen, son. When you get him in a corner, throw the saddle on and cinch it tight, and don't let him get away. <laughs> Doggone it, you don't know nothing about horses or women. Well, good night. Good night. Jake, uh, do we split the 20 dollars on his bucks? Whoever gets the first rope on him, okay? Yeah, if you can hold it. That's right. Well, I won't look for you boys until I see you. This won't take long. Here you are, Jeff. I made this myself. I thought maybe it might come in handy. Thanks. Where are you starting the search? Half Mile Ridge? Yeah, I thought I'd send a couple of boys over there, but I'm going to cover that north range with Clem and Tony. Who are you going with, Jeff? With Chick. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Keene. That show horse of yours will be brought in without a scratch on him. This time I won't say I'll be back tomorrow. This time I hope you don't have to walk back. Just remember what I told you last night. I will. What did you tell him last night? Man talk. Ask him when he gets back. So, well, if he's hanging around up here, you have to come down for water. The creek's just over in that draw. Yep, they've been here not more than 10 minutes ago. Yeah, water's still trickling in the hoof track. Well, come on, let's spread out and get them. I believe you spread yourself out once before, Mr. Keene, but you didn't get them, did you? There he is. But he's all alone. Come on, Chick. Oh, what's your hurry? What do you mean, what's the hurry? He's getting away. That horse of yours isn't so dumb after all. He stashed that mare someplace, and he's trying to lead us away from her. Look, I don't care anything about the mare. Let's get Jubilee. By waiting right here. You chase him, he run our horses dizzy. You let him go, and he'll come sneaking back. Come on, let's find the mare. Well, hello. 
the creek. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. That's good. <laughs> Come on. Tony? Yeah? You hide around here. If Jubilee shows up, spook him to Clem. He'll be down the creek a ways. Clem, you make him think the devil himself is after him and bring him to me. I'll be down by that little lake. Right. What if Clem and me snags him before we get that far? Then you have yourself a lot of money. Ain't I giving you guys a first crack at him? Yeah, sure. What are you gonna do? Stay here, I guess. I'm afraid it can't be much help to you until after you've caught Jubilee. That's a real bright idea. At least you'll be out from underfoot. Let's get set. Come on with me, Jeff. make a wonderful target from here. Now where's he going? Here he comes. 
Jubileum. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? What's the matter with you? What's the matter? Can't you take it? Hey, get up. Mr. Keene. Mr. Keene. Hey, Chick, we heard a shot. What happened to him? Ah, oh, the cinch bus is on his saddle. Got a pretty bad fall. That ain't his saddle, it's yours. How are you gonna prove he didn't swap horses? Let's get him back to the house. Reduce the throbbing and let you get a little sleep. Thanks, Doc. You're going to be all right, isn't he, Doctor? Right as rain. He isn't the first man to get a bump on the head. But frankly, Mr. Keene, that blow at the base of your skull could have been very serious. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry that horse that you rode was so rambunctious, Jeff. Yeah, I reckon there's been nobody on him lately. What do you mean that horse was gentle as a kitten? Tell Chick I want to see him. You'd better take it easy for a few days. I'll be back Friday. Friday? Yes, Friday. If you need me before then, Joan can give me a ring. Yes, Doctor. Goodbye. Bye. Friday. Who knows where Jubilee will be by then? Well, he'll probably be right around our corral trying to steal another playmate. Remember, he's all alone now. Look, I can't stay here. The doctor said you were to rest. Chick just came in. He'll be waiting for you in the living room. Come in. I'll be right back. Hey, what's this about that horse being rambunctious? Go to sleep. Yes, ma'am. Your grandpa said you want to see me. Yes. What's up? I talked to Clem and Tony. Jeff wasn't thrown, Chick. Here's your time to the first of the month. No, Joan, I'm not taking it just because Jeff Keene come crying to Mama. When you want it, let me know. And for your information, Jeff doesn't even know he was supposed to have been thrown. Oh, now, Joan, don't be like that. We've been friends for a long time. It doesn't give you the right to make trouble. And this isn't the first time, Chick. Well, a man's got a right to defend himself, hasn't he? Keen's horse tried to kill me. Is that any reason for you to try to kill Jeff? I'm sorry, Chick. Here's your time. And the sooner you leave, the better for everyone concerned. All right. Fine. But you can tell Jeff Keen when he catches that horse of his, it won't be worth a plug nickel. If he ever does catch him. Why don't you try Texas next time, Chick? <laughs> Tell me there's plenty of room down there to let off steam.
darling, you shouldn't be on a bed. What was that you said? I said, never mind. The doctor said... What you said, better medicine, don't you think? All right, then. Darling, how do you feel? Oh, awful. I've got a jet-propelled hangover. What did that doctor give me, anyway? Just a little sedative to make you sleep. You'd better get back to bed. Hey, you know that chick can really handle himself? I'll have to congratulate him in the morning. He won't be here in the morning. We had a little talk and he left. What do you mean, he left? There was a difference of opinion as to how you got hurt. He said you were thrown from a horse. Oh, I see. When did he leave? Just before you went to sleep. And he's gone looking for Jubilee. Don't get excited. What do you mean, don't get excited? He's tried to shoot him twice. Next time, he might have better luck. Now, I've already told the boys to start after Jubilee at daybreak. So go back to bed. Some fresh air is just the thing for this hangover. Why don't you hit the hay? You could use some sleep. <laughs> I can be just as stubborn as you. I'm going with you. Your what? No arguments. Now, you may need these. They certainly were a sight. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sunrise found us well on our way. We searched every meadow and clearing that was a likely hiding place for Jubilee. I was worried about Jeff. The trip was hard on him. But he wouldn't give up. Although we didn't know it then, Jubilee wasn't the only stallion on the range. He had had many adventures, but this time it was a case of kill or be killed. By the end of the day, we were miles from the ranch. Well, we're getting nowhere fast. We'll find him. Tired? Nope. Dead. How about you? Don't worry about me. I didn't fall off a horse. Holy smokes, look at the time. We better be heading back. We have to start all over again? It's 20 miles to the ranch. We'll camp here and get an early start in the morning. We'll what? This is as good a place as any. Well, won't your grandfather worry about you? Because I'm out with you? He'll be delighted. Tell me, ma'am, would you like me to go out and shoot your little uh, bar for supper? Well, thank you kindly, sir, but bars are too fat and too much trouble to skin. Would you settle for a roast beef sandwich? Maybe you've made a deal. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> well, that's old Chris Wolf. Drunk or dead? Oh, just napping. He always sleeps on his horse. Hello, Chris. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, hello, Joni. I guess I must have dozed off. I thought you were camping on that mountain of gold you found. Well, I was, but the ding thing. Who's that? Never seen him before. This is Jeff Keene. Hello. Hmm, never heard of him. You shouldn't have woke me, Joni. 
I plumb forgot about my arm. What happened to it? Horse bit me. You mean this thing bit you? Sis don't bite. You should have seen that horse, Junie. There I was, sleeping like a babe. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear a noise. I open my eyes, and there standing over me was this wild stud, looking as big as a mountain. Stud? Don't interrupt me, young fella. Like I was saying, Johnny, there I was, and there was this critter ready to stump me into a grease spot. So I rolled over fast, and the first thing I knowed, he had his teeth sunk right in my arm. What did you do? Well, I grabbed me a rock with his hand, and I banged him on the nose, and he took off. Do you remember what he looked like? Well, I sure do. He was a red-looking devil with a blazed face and the meanest pair of eyes I ever seen. Where were you when this happened? Back in the hills yonder. Well, good day, Joni. So long, Chris. Getting so a man ain't safe in his own backyard. I don't get it, but the description sure sounds like Jubilee. Not necessarily. There are a lot of horses running around these hills. Besides, I wouldn't believe old Chris if he were standing on a stack of Bibles this high. I thought he had you. So did I. It just doesn't make sense. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. I'll saddle the horse. Well, you can't find him tonight. Maybe we'll drive him further away. We'll pick up his trail in the morning. I guess you're right. We started after Jubilee at daybreak. But Chick was on the job, too. That's Jubilee, all right. Down by the stream. What are you going to do? Wait here. I will not.
death. Drop it, chick. Go ahead, take a good shot, why don't you? You know, I really ought to with that. But I want you to help me. You want him to help you? I want you to help me catch Jubilee. There's only one way to catch that knothead, and that's with a bullet. The horse is a killer, and you know it. It may be that he's just frightened and excited. Then again, he may have turned wild. But I've got to find out. Just how do you figure to go about it? I want you to rope him for me if you can. Then let me take over. But if he's turned wild, Jeff, he'll kill you as quickly as anyone else. I don't think so. If I can just get him where I can work on him, I think I can talk some sense into him. But I need help, Chick. Help from a champion. How about it? Sure, why not? So I have to find him again first. We will. And when we do, don't get careless with this thing. Thanks. Come on. I watched Jeff's face as we started after Jubilee. And I could see that in spite of what he had said, he was afraid. Afraid of what might happen when we overtook the horse. Afraid that Jubilee had been free too long. That he'd gone completely wild. And that there was no way of saving him. There he is. Yeah, but if he spots us, he won't be there long. Maybe Joe and I can circle him and drive him back here to where you can get a rope on him. Yeah, you might. Swing wide and keep out of sight, and we'll try and drive him out on that little peninsula over there. You go that way, Jeff. I'll ride around this end of the lake. Good shot, now hold on to him. It's all right, son. Nobody's going to hurt you. You can slack off now. This ought to hold him. Just settle down now. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, boy. Oh. Careful, Jeff. Come on, Nelson. Easy. Stop it! Watch yourself, Jeff. Jubilee! Mr. Keene, you monkey with that horse, you're going to get yourself killed. Why don't you put him out of the way and get it over with? He's all excited. I'll give him time to settle down.
Getting kind of late, ain't it? He's quieted down a lot. Don't let that fool you, none. I've seen plenty of bad ones act just like him. He can't have gone completely bad. It's only that he was babied all of his life, then accidentally thrown out on his own. Who knows what's happened to him since then. There were only some way to make him remember. Jubilee. You're all right now, aren't you, son? Come on, boy. Julie! No use, Jeff. You think he's a killer, too? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid he is. You can't handle him. No, and you can't turn him loose, either, because he'll kill somebody. You both know horses. You may be right. He might kill someone. And if he did, then he'd be hunted down and killed. Yeah, I know how you feel about him. Why don't you go with Joan? Let me take care of this. I'll take care of it myself. Gotta be now or never, son. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Jubilee. Come on, son. You must know me. Easy. Steady, boy. Jubilee! Easy, boy. That's it. Easy. Steady, son. Steady now. That's it. Better boy. Come on, son. Easy. Steady boy. Easy. Oh. Come on now. Steady. Come on, son. Come on. Oh, son. Oh. Steady. Good boy. Good boy, son. That's it, son. Steady now. Steady, boy. <laughs> you a killer? Come on, boy. We'll show him. Steady now. Oh, Jeff, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. If this buckle didn't have my name on it, Mr. Keene, I'd give it to you. You'll get a check with my name on it. Thanks. I'll send you my forwarding address. Well, you can tell your grandpa I took his advice about Texas. So long. You know, your grandpa gave me some good advice, too. I think I'll take it, if you'll cooperate. You mean man talk? How did you know? <laughs> I know grandpa. I'll cooperate. Well, it was all over. Jeff and Jubilee were going back to the life they loved so well. And of course, that left me with only one choice. I went with them. 